It's been a while since I've seen a good shark movie, and some of you might be thinking, bro, they've made two amazing Meg films. Bro, they're good, bro. Bro, they're good. And those are direct quotes from about a thousand comments on a TikTok video where I talk about Meg 2. Don't believe me? <laughs> Go check. It's, it's quite hilarious. It's almost like bots have taken over, but sadly they're real people. Anyway, Under Paris is a real movie that's on Netflix. It's, it's exclusive, I think, or, or something. Who cares? I watched it. I wasted my time and now I'm going to waste yours talking about it. Let's begin. We start this tale, a shark tale really, in 2024 on a Monday, I remember it like it was a Monday, I was laying in bed, or lying if, if you must, scrolling through the endless supply of shit that Netflix has to offer with my wife and we went to the recommended section or the top streaming section or new on Netflix, I think they're honestly all the same section just labeled slightly differently, and there it stood, calling out to me from above, hello, hello, watch under Paris. And I did, because it had a pretty looking cover with a giant shark, and I'm stupid, and so that's all it takes for me to click on something. And boy, I felt smarter after watching this film. Unfortunately, Under Paris is not one of those movies that's so schlocky and dumb and fun that it's in on its own joke, nor is it a serious, smart, sophisticated film that still has enough camp and enough going on to make you squirm like a Jaws. Instead, this is like Jaws's dumbass cousin. He's a French shark. <laughs> and he's been swimming around in trash. Literally. Because there is a place where they're dumping all their garbage right into the ocean. It's, it's a complete nightmare. But a group of scientists find it all so fascinating and they've been studying the sharks that live in this area. They've been monitoring one of them for a few years now. I can't honestly remember the name. It's like Tiffany or Abigail, Lindsay. I don't know. It's, it's, a, na it's a female name. It's a female shark. And it's been eating well. It's gotten quite a bit larger, noticeably larger over time. I will say the first five minutes had me hooked. I thought it looked really pretty. I thought we might have something truly special and different in this shark universe we live in. But it didn't take long for the dumb to really start. Uh, first off, these are some of the most bold scientists I've ever seen. Four or five of them jump into the water and they're going to just like poke at the sharks that are swimming around. There's seven or eight of these fucking sharks. And these guys are just like, oh, this is no big deal. If it gets close, I'll just like punch it in the nose. <laughs> These aren't cats or dogs. Like, they're not gonna just run up to you and lick you or bark. They're gonna eat your face off. But anyway, they're Mako sharks, and these scientists are pretty confident they know how to deal with them. So they're swimming out, trying to tag them. Suddenly, Susan comes out of nowhere. This shark is a behemoth. The guys get noticeably frightened for good reason, because it's frightening beyond all reason. And so they start to panic. Francesca's hungry though, fam. So kicking and screaming, that's not gonna do anything to deter her. In fact, it makes you all the more appetizing. I guess that brings us to the uh, hero of the film, Sophia. There's no real heroes in here, only losers. She jumps in when she sees her team get absolutely decimated because her husband's amongst them. <laughs> And so she's just swimming out there, doesn't even have gear on. She has no mask or anything. She's just gonna hold her breath. Good thing it's crystal clear water and she can see for miles with her peepers. She goes under, looking around the trash, sees a floating hand, and then boom, that shark comes into view. And this is where the dumb really kicks into gear. She's already been underwater for what has to have been several minutes. That's fair. Professionals can hold their breath for quite a long time. What they can't do, however, is survive the cold harshness of being pulled to your death super fast and super deep, which is exactly what happens to her. Somehow her little spear gun gets attached to Agatha, and that fucker swims straight down into the cold depths of hell, with Sophia hanging on. And this is kind of how it looks. And they're doing this like Japanese anime line stuff going on to show just how fast they're going. But there's zero consequence. I think the only takeaway was that she gets some nosebleeds from time to time. Before I get any further, I want to point out this movie blows. And I'm, I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to I'm going to spoil it. Yeah, I, I don't see any reason not to. It's It's pretty much trash. It's one of those movies that, well, I did this. I watched the first hour um, kind of contemplating why. And then at some point I decided, you know what, I'm going to start fast forwarding to the action scenes. That's where I'm at. I don't do that ever. 
but this movie is tedious and, and kind of dumb all around. So I thought, eh, yeah, we'll, we'll just see where this goes. And so that's what I did because there's really nothing of value in this film. The effects are incredibly cartoonish. It's shot digitally. Nothing has a cinematic quality at all. So you already lose that heightened sense of fear just because everything has that crystal clear picture to it. It makes the CG sharks that much more noticeably fake. Oftentimes it doesn't look like the people are even underwater. They're just kind of sitting there floating with the green screen behind them. And I actually laughed pretty loud because there's a scene in the movie where we get introduced to the new generation of scientists and there's these two women and they go out at night because what happens is our big ass shark, Jenny, she decides she's gonna start swimming in the river. She's gonna start swimming in the Seine River in the heart of Paris, going down the canals and whatnot. It's not a good situation, but there's a bunch of activists, the new gen out there that wants this shark protected. It doesn't want anything bad to happen. Sharks and animals are just as equal as humans and all that stuff, kumbaya. They get out in a raft, just these two women. And I turned to my wife who was still managing to stay awake for about five more minutes. And I said, I guarantee these two are gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but because I know how these movies work now, I guarantee they're gay. Two women alone at night, one of them's about to go overboard. And Lindsay goes, Adam, just because there's two women together in a scene, doesn't mean that every time, and then they kissed right after that. <laughs> it is so stupid because I know what they're doing. There's no reason to have that scene in the movie outside of funding. The, you know, there's always going to be this, this group of people, the, the anti-woke and whatnot yelling because it's all like indoctrination or whatever. I mean, gay people get married. That, that, that's fine. I have no problem with any of that. I have a problem with the hacky ass writing though. The only reason they put this in was because they could get funding for the film from a group or, you know, whatever it is, there's different ways to get funding for movies. And I've talked to several people in the industry and that's just how it works. If you show this representation, this group of people will fund you for this. If you show this, you know, it's all about brand, it's all about sponsorships and all that stuff. And so when that happened, I thought, yep, they checked off the box. They got that out of the way. They can get funding for this. And I guess fair point. It's hard to get movies funded. So sure. Maybe focus on a better movie though. And less about how you're going to fund it. Because the scene has no reason to exist outside of, yep, okay, cool. The context of the scene is absolutely batshit insane. These two women go out there and one of them's like, I know I can reach out to the shark and get her to follow me back to the ocean where she'll be safe. So she's going to go out illegally in the dead of night in the water alone. And so I guess she's just going to reach out to the shark as like a friend and go, hey, 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 ma'am, why don't you come with me? Girls get it done together. Let's swim back on the ocean. Get, get out of this water. This isn't for you. It's dumb. And it leads to nothing in the movie. We build it up a bit, but then the local authorities break it up anyways. No sign of the shark. There are several scenes like this where it's just build and nothing at the end. When we finally do get our first bloodbath sequence, it's underneath the innards of Paris. Down below, there's a bunch of old tunnels and whatnot. And they find a system that this shark is going to be going in and out of. Turns out it's her nest. Because this is not a Mako shark. This is a new breed. It's evolved due to climate change and pollution and whatnot. And now it can just give birth on its, on its own. It just has a baby. <laughs> And then the babies can have babies as well. So a two month old shark can actually carry a bunch more sharks. It's, it's wild stuff what's happening in this animal kingdom. All the silly sci-fi aside, that scene is kind of a shit show as well. Again, the activist girl goes out into the water while all the other people sit around a circle filming it. And Sophia shows up, she's like, no, you Fucking idiots, this shark is a killer. It's not like other sharks, which I apparently are super friendly and love humans now. Get out of here, go away. And then of course, shocker, little baby Finn comes up along with mommy and Sophia says, don't pet the shark, don't try to be friends. The mom's gonna think it's a threatening act. And boom, we're off to the races. Everyone's freaking slaughtered. It's hilarious. The CG's terrible. We get this random cut that is never seamless at all. It'll be just jarringly out of place where a person will be like, oh, shark's coming. And then we'll do a bird's eye view, top down shot of the CG person, the computer generated person getting eaten by the shark as it blows up from underneath the water. It looks awful. 
and every time it's just rendered so quickly and so jarringly that it's hard to like even reconcile what was going on from shot to shot. The reason this is dumbass Jaws is because it truly is the same plot. You have a shark swimming in an area it's not supposed to be with a huge population of people. The mayor does not seem to have any care about it. She's just like, get it done. We're hosting a massive event with tens of thousands of people and billions of dollars of budget. We cannot have a dumb shark ruining things. Figure it out, but we're not shutting down the river. There's the one person that knows this isn't right and something needs to be done. It's the same movie. And yet this is a modern film in 2024 that has access to all the greatest tech out there, still manages to make the shark look way worse, no threats at all, it's not scary at all, it's just an uninteresting, messy movie from front to back. Occasionally you can find some good stuff to laugh at. The final act is bonkers as shit because it turns out there's hundreds of sharks now that have been birthed in the river. They're just swimming around. And so Sophia and her crack squad of cops is like, we need to blow up the wall to trap all the sharks in, keep them away from the river. They'll be on the other side in the ocean and we'll be, we'll be good. And so this kind of works, but of course the big mother shark, Trinity, blows through the rocks. We get this final confrontation where Betsy is swimming around at supersonic speeds. There's people on gun turrets <laughs> trying to hit her. <laughs> Bullets are whizzing through the water. The shark is dodging every single one of them until it's realized that there are old timey bombs sitting at the bottom of the canals and one shot and these things are gonna blow, which they do. Bridges start blowing up and Paris goes under. Hence, under Paris. Or, or something. The film mercifully ends with our two heroes sitting on an upside down boat as the camera pulls away and we see shark fin after shark fin swimming around them and circling them in death itself. And we see Paris up in flames, fires and bridges blown up and garbage and debris all over the place. And well, look, look at that. The sharks have made this their home because they were born into the trash and now they're back in it again. It is kind of poetic, and I did appreciate the ending. The ending's pretty cool, actually. The final shot's cool. And that's it. That's really it. There, there's, like, a cool 30-second shot that <laughs> that doesn't save this movie in the slightest. Yeah, it's dumb. It's just, it's just kind of dumb, and not in the fun way, not in, like, a Lake Placid way. There's not enough here. There's no over-the-top characters or settings or situations, really, that lead to anything too exciting. It's all just kind of stale. Of course, until the final act when they're shooting at the shark, but this is all done very quickly within the span of a couple minutes. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Under Paris, AKA Dumb Jaws. Let me know your thoughts. Did you waste your time watching this? Do you have a different take? Did you actually love it? Uh, also, it is a foreign film, so there are subtitles that, that might bother some people. They have to read a little bit. But for the most part, you're just watching some pretty mediocre effects take place underwater. Let me know. Please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Please subscribe. Every subscription that I get is another one that the channel has, which is, that's a fact that some people don't know, that when you subscribe, my numbers of subscribers actually go up. That's what I call an Adam fun fact. You get all sorts of those here. I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I rant about other things outside of movies. It's all very light, first world problem stuff. I have Patreon at Adam Does Movies. Lots of ways to support the channel and just see me around. And hopefully I see you next time. Take care.